13 things in Stardew Valley that you might find surprisingly helpful. Most of us will go the community center route, but if we want to get every single achievement in the game, then we will be forced to go the Jojo route. But the Jojo route has one fatal flaw. You will need to pay for community upgrades with money and you will not get any bonus rewards from doing this. So there will be no free crystallariums or seed makers or anything really. So what you could do is just go the normal community center route and complete all of the bundles except for one. When there is literally only one thing left to do, head over to the Jojo Mart and buy the membership. This way, you can get the achievement while still getting those bonus rewards from the community center. Nice. This tip is for those of you who absolutely hate fishing. All you need to do is fish a tiny bit until you are level 3. I know you hate fishing, but with the help of the training rod, you can get to level 3 really quickly. After that, you can just drop your fishing rod straight into the trash and focus all of your fishing efforts on crab pots. Crab pots might not be as profitable as regular fishing, but it will still give you fishing experience. Fish ponds will also give you fishing experience whenever you collect some fish row. So just passively gain fishing experience until you have maxed out your fishing levels and then give it another try with a bigger fishing bar. I'm sure you knew that you can fish for void mayonnaise in the witch's hut to give to the henchman. But once you do give him some void mayonnaise, you will be unable to fish for more mayo. Instead, you could just spend days, weeks, and even years fishing up tons of void mayo and never giving it to him. This is a very odd way of making money that will literally stop you from progressing in the game and unlocking obelisks. But hey, why not? The key fruit special order request is one of the most frustrating quests out there. You will need to get 500 key fruit and you will get key fruit seeds randomly as you do things around the world. One of the most reliable ways to get key fruit seeds is by simply cracking open geodes. But as you might know, geode crushers have this very weird quirk where it will always produce the last thing you cracked open at Clint. So if you get some key fruit seeds from Clint after cracking open a geode, just immediately drop an omni geode in a geode crusher and get some guaranteed key fruit seeds easily. If you do this for an entire day, your key fruit journey is going to be effortless. If you want to move a building but can't because Robin decided that she's not working today, you can still move your buildings at the wizard. The wizard is great. He never takes a day off, so you can use his premium store to move your buildings. Quite convenient if you ask me. The forest farm is simply the best farm layout in the game. Why? Because you can easily get hardwood at any point in the game as 8 hardwood stumps will respawn every single day on this farm. That means that you can get 16 pieces of hardwood every single day in addition to the hardwood by the secret woods. However, this is about more than just hardwood because with a couple wood chippers, we can generate between 80 and 300 pieces of regular wood every single day. The forest farm is just too good. If you want an easy playthrough, pick the forest farm. The hilltop farm is pretty rough, especially if you are a newer player. It's just so awkward and there isn't much space on this farm to plant crops. But someone left this amazing comment. Build your coop and your barn over the quarry part of your hilltop farm. Yes, this will stop the rocks from spawning, but it's not that helpful anyway. The benefit of this is that you will free up space on the rest of your farm to plant crops. I am probably going to do this on my perfection series. Pretty simple one, but I always do this. Turn on zoom buttons in the menu screen so that you can easily zoom out when adventuring in the mines or the skull cavern. This will seriously help you find existing ladders in the mines and save you a ton of time. Nothing is more frustrating than hitting a bunch of rocks just to find a ladder just chilling there waiting to be used. You already know that pigs are the most profitable animal in the 
game, but they do cost 16,000 gold, which is a lot. It really is a lot. So if you are truly broke in the game, just buy as many pigs as you can afford. Just look after them and make sure that there are no other types of animals in that barn. Don't worry about sheep or cows, you don't need them. The game will pick a random barn and then a random animal in that barn will give birth. If there are cows or sheep in that barn, then there is a chance you won't get a pig. Eventually your pigs will give birth to new baby pigs. They can only do this if there is space in the barn. Slimes might not be the most annoying enemy in the game, but they really can be a pain. To make things a million times easier, just get yourself a slime charm ring. It will stop slimes from damaging you and slowing you. But to get this ring, you will need to defeat a bunch of slimes. Like a ton of slimes. That kind of defeats the purpose, right? Well, what you could do is convert your quarry into the ultimate slime farm. Just hatch a couple green slimes over here and then completely forget about them. Over time, they will breed, multiply, and turn into a literal army of easy to defeat green slimes. Then just come over to your quarry with a hammer and absolutely demolish all of them. This really can help you get the slime trauma ring easily. With the help of the forge, we can get a bunch of amazing enchantments on our weapons like the artful enchant and the conqueror. But what about the haymaker enchantment? Is that enchantment just terrible? Well, it is terrible for combat, but it's highly underrated for utility on our farm. It will cause weeds to drop more fiber, and it will also occasionally cause weeds to drop hay right into our silo. This enchantment should not be on your main weapon, but only on a secondary weapon that is exclusively used to clear weeds, like your old lava katana that you do not use anymore. You could ask Robin to move your shipping bin. Usually we would only do this for decorative reasons. But you could move it right over here, a little bit closer to your farmhouse entrance. But more importantly, it's closer to the teleportation point if you use a return scepter. So use your return scepter at the absolute last minute, sell your stuff and still make it to bed in time. Last and most definitely least, animal sounds. You can click on this little pig by the traveling cart lady and it will make really weird sounds. You can also click on this pig at the winter fishing festival and it will make weird sounds as well. But did you know that you can click on the camel by the desert trader as well and it will make even weirder sounds than all of them. I only learned about the camel a week ago. Wow. Did you know that your horse has a secret? Yes, and you can find out by clicking on this video over here. Thank you for watching, but for now, I will see you in the next video.